Here I'll show you how to delete the first or last word or part from a cell in Excel. And we're going to do it using formulas. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. What I'll do here is I'll first show you how to use these formulas and change them to work for your data, then how to prevent errors with them. And after that, I'm going to go through the formulas and explain how everything works, just in case you want to know. So for the first section, we have removing or deleting the first word or the first section. You can see here I have some basic text. Separator is a space. And down here, something like a part number. It's just to show you that it doesn't have to be in a sentence format. All you need for this to work is a separator, something that separates individual parts of the cell. And we're going to remove the first part. So for this, we're going to use the right formula. So the right formula, or the right function, allows you to get text from the right of the cell. Now I'll explain more about that later. What you have to change is just this right here. So right here, we are looking for a space because spaces are what separate the individual parts of the cell. So just change that to work for your data. So down here, since we have dashes, the only difference is that we've replaced a space with a dash. So copy paste this in your formula, update the cell references, and put in the appropriate separator right here. Now for the next section to remove the last part, it's going to be a little bit bigger. <laughs> So here we use the left function. We want to get everything from the left side of the cell. And you have to change two things here. So we have a separator right here, currently a space, and a separator right here. You'll notice down here, that's the only difference, once again, a dash right here and a dash right here. So copy, paste it, update the cell references, change the separators, good to go. Now the other thing, another version of this, is to encapsulate the formulas I just showed you inside of the if error function. And what that is going to do is if, for instance, there is no separator here, let's say it's just one word, it will throw an error. But what you might want to do, since there's no space, everything should be good to go, is just output the value of that cell. So here we use the if error function. We have the formula that we just used and we say, hey, if this dude throws an error, just output the current cell or the current contents of that cell. So that's how you can prevent errors here. Let's back that up. There we go. And it's the same for everything else. We just surround the formulas with the if error function. Exactly the same down here. So if that's all that you want, if that's all that you need, you're good to go. Download the workbook, copy paste the formulas, update the separators and the references. Life is good. Now there is one real quick thing actually to note here. If any of your text has this little squiggle in it, change it here and here to something that will never appear in the cell. Now it's time to take a closer look at the formulas. So let's start with deleting the first word right here. So I told you we use the right function. It's going to get everything from the right of the cell. So in order to delete the first word, we can't use a function that says, hey, delete this word. We have to use a function that says, hey, get everything after this word. So everything from the right of the cell. That's why we use the right function. And it has two simple, simple arguments. One, the cell or the data we're going to operate on here, A2. And how many characters should we get from the right of the cell? So if you input a 1 or you leave this blank, it'll simply get the period at the end of the cell, the very last character. And it'll look like that. But we want more than the last character. In fact, we want a bunch of characters. So this is the section that may look a little bit confusing, but it allows us to get everything after the first word. And how we do that is we first find where the first separator is in the cell. So find goes left to right to find whatever you put right here. You can see the arguments. We have find text within text and optional start number, which we're not going to be using here. 
So find goes from the left of the cell and it looks for this character. And it's going to return the position of that character within the cell. So if I highlight this and hit F9, we can see that the first space occurs in position number 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we want to get everything after 5. Well, how many characters come after 5, after the fifth character in the cell? To do that, we have to figure out how many characters there are in the cell. So we use the ln function. That gives us that gives us 16. So we can see that there are 16 characters in the cell. We do not want the first five characters in the cell, so we subtract 5 from 15, and that's going to give us 11. And now what we've done is we've told the write function to get 11 characters from the right of the cell, and that's what gives us this. So I hope that's not too confusing. It works exactly the same down here. So this is the easy one, conceptually. The next one is where it gets difficult. So let us center it. Here, we want to remove the last section of the cell. The problem is we don't know how many sections there are going to be. So with this dude up here, it was always one. It was always remove the first part. But this one, it could be remove the fourth part, the fifth part, the 18th part, the second part. You just don't know. And that's what makes this guy so complicated. Now, before we get into the formula itself, I'm going to explain the concept behind it, because it can be a little bit tricky. So you understand conceptually that we have to remove the last section of the cell. And probably now you understand we're going to use the separator to figure that out. So a space right here and a dash right here. But the problem is, how do we find the last separator in the cell? Well, sadly, you can't just say find the third space or find the last space. You just can't do that. So what we have to do is we have to locate this space then we have to replace it with a unique character. Then we can use the find function to give us the position of the unique character. Then, with that position, we can remove everything after it. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We use the left function because we want to get everything from the left of the cell up to the last separator. It only has two arguments, just like the right function, a text and a number of characters. So all of this right here is just to tell you how many characters to get from the left of the cell. Now we will start inside to out here. Remember I told you that we need to find the last separator and replace it with a unique character. Well, how do you find the last separator? First, we need to know how many separators there are, because we can't just say get the last one. So we have to count how many separators there are. And that is what this little dude right here does. It's kind of a neat little trick to count how many separators are in a cell. So what you do is you take the total count of characters in the cell using the len function, and then you go into the cell and you kill, you replace, you delete all of the separators. And we use the substitute function to delete all of the separators. And the substitute function, it's a great little function. It allows you to replace text with other text. So first argument is text. You say, hey, what are we going to work with? Well, I'm going to work with cell A7. OK. Then we say, hey, what's the text we want to replace? Well, I want to replace the space, all of the spaces. And what do I want to replace it with? Here, I want to replace it with nothing, emptiness. That effectively deletes the space from the cell. And the fourth argument for substitute, which we don't use here, but we will use in a moment, is the instance number. It is which instance of this text do you want to replace? If you leave it blank, it replaces all of them. So if I go here and calculate it, F9, you will see that this is my text has all of the spaces removed. 
and then we count using the len function how many characters that is. So that will tell us how many spaces there are. So I do this right here, 13, and this right here, 16, and we get 16 minus 13, which is 3. So that tells you there are three spaces. That's amazing. We've identified there are three spaces. Now we can continue up the food chain to do something useful. Let me hit Escape to reset that real quick. Otherwise, it will save the changes I made. We just covered this part. 16 minus 13 is 3. We are still trying to replace the last separator with a unique character. So we put this guy inside of another substitute function. Here we have the cell we're going to work with. What do we want to replace? We want to replace a space. What do we want to replace the space with? Something unique, something that does not exist in your data set. So here I have the little tilde or squiggle or whatever the heck that's called. Put whatever you want in there that will never appear in your data set. And then we use the optional argument of instance number. Which space do we want to replace with a unique character? Well, we know there are three spaces. The third space is the last space. So that's what this guy was used for. This tells the other substitute function to replace the last separator with a unique character. And now that we have done that, we can then use the find function to search for this unique character. So find function, we want to find text. What text? The unique character. Within what text? Well, we have now taken this over here and replaced the last separator with a squiggle. So if I select all of this, or oops, I did it a little bit too much, all of this, this is my text, and there you can see the squiggle. So we are now looking for the squiggle right there. That gives us the position of the last separator so we can go ahead and delete the end of the cell. Let me hit escape once again so none of the calculations are saved. OK. Now you may be wondering, what is the minus 1 for? Well, we get the position of the last separator. And we use that position to tell the left function, hey, get everything up to the last separator. So if we do not have a minus 1 here, it will include that separator. So you won't see it here because it's a space. But here, if we go ahead and delete the minus 1, you will see the separator, the dash at the end of the cell. And you don't want that. So that's why you plug minus 1 in right there. And that's all there is to it. Of course, it's a lot of steps. Yes, it's a bit annoying. The problem is that you can't just delete a word from the end of the cell, and you can't just find the last separator. So you have to go at this in a sort of a roundabout way in order to find the last separator, and then replace the last separator with a unique character, and then find that unique character because the find function is what returns its position within the cell and then make sure you subtract one so you don't include the separator, and then get everything from the left of the cell up to that character. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a bit complicated, and that's why I started the tutorial to show you just how to change it to work for your data. Now, that's all for this tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.